Hi, I'm Cody. And I'm Casey. Uh, and we're two of the members of FanPup, bringing you our thoughts on Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Yeah. Well, first of all, just overall and mm -hmm. the sense of tone, and uh, this was great. I mean, I thought that it hit a different kind of tone than the other Marvel movies. Mm -hmm. uh, it was scaled just right for Cap, mm -hmm. I think, in the sense of, uh, you know, it's not the Avengers where you're taking on Galactus or something like that, you know? Yep. It's government intrigue, it's corruption, it's the kind of stuff that tried and true Captain America is great at taking on. Yeah, it makes sense for him thematically. Exactly. And so, yeah, I love the tone. What about you? Uh, yeah, I liked the tone a lot. Um, there was talk going into it about this being sort of a 1970s conspiracy thriller, and it very much delivered uh, in that realm. Especially, I thought, bringing Robert Redford in as... Uh, we're about to get into some spoilers also, yep. so if, if you haven't seen the movie, stop right now. Uh, but bringing Robert Redford in as what turns out to be one of the major villains it was a really cool maneuver. Just because in a lot of the 1970s conspiracy thrillers, I think Three Days of the Condor, All the President's Men, that they're trying to emulate, Robert Redford plays essentially the Captain America character, the, the, you know, the one fighting for justice and trying to uncover the truth. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I'd, and the I villains, liked... villains overall seem like a, a, a nice step up yes. for this film than maybe some of the other Marvel films where we're just like, eh, I mean, Loki's Not... awesome, we all love Loki, but this gave us kind of a, a, a like, panel of villains, so to speak, and that were all amazing with Winter Soldier leading the panel. Yeah, yeah, I mean, definitely. You got Winter Soldier leading the charge, um, and, you know, he's just a force to be reckoned with. He's just kind of like this force of nature, this badass um, who comes in there. Kind of like, you sort of reminded me a little bit of, like, the Terminator. Um, and But you also have all these, like I said, Robert Redford, and even some of the, the secondary villains. Um, Frank Grillo plays uh, Brock Rumlow, future Crossbones, yep. and... Even he was, you know, sort of like leading the, the mooks, I guess, and he was just like this badass that, you know, sort of this like special ops kind of guy that you still wouldn't want to run into. Yeah, um, and I love it when a movie will do that and have it, you've got all these people and, and you've got lead henchmen who's still yeah. a major force to be reckoned with. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he so, goes up against Sam Wilson uh, at one point and is, is, is just basically like, I'm going to kick your ass right here. And... <laughs> It's kind of cool. Yeah. He's like, I can't change the course of this battle, but I can take you out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's sort of totally what it was. Like, all this anger, probably, his plan is coming down around him. And then he's like, I'm going to murder you. I'm going to murder your face. <laughs> that, that was pretty awesome. Well, um, that's just a good segue into the action in yes, general. Yes, the action. <laughs> um, it was action-packed. It was very action-packed. What did you feel about, you know, the action in this one versus maybe some of the others? I, I loved it. I loved that this one took the kind of broader view in the sense of hey let's peel back let's let you see what the cap can do you know it's mm -hmm. like it's like you get to see what the shield can do you get to see what he can do yeah he's totally it's like a feature where he is just spot in the spotlight and yeah. it totally works it definitely does and i mean he's cap is he's a scary fighter you know I, i've said it before that he is he's a a morally just and a righteous man and he's a scary badass that you would not want to meet on the battlefield. He is as strong and as fast and as durable as a human being can possibly be and so I felt all the fights, you know, all, all just the action in general, especially even the hand-to-hand -hand combat between him and the Winter Soldier um, and then even one of our favorite fights just between him and like a dozen uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. slash yeah. HYDRA agents yeah. in, uh, the in the elevator scene. was just so badass and just yeah. kind of, I don't know, just showed his physical prowess um, yeah. and a little bit of that swagger, I think, too. He got a little bit of that because he's kind of pissed after the fight and he sort of has, like, they put this handcuff on him and he just kind of, you know, he just yeah. takes it off with his right. Uh, shield. Right, it's right. Like, Damn. These... Which is a prime example of, like, and another another filmmaker might have taken the approach, which I know you somewhat like in the Bourne films, where it's, oh, we're in this confined space, so it's going to be a whole bunch of, oh, you see the body parts, and then you're mm -hmm. trying to figure it out, and you hear it's mostly sound that you're figuring it out by. Yeah. But in this, I mean, it's an elevator compact scene, but you really get to see all the blows and really just enjoy each and every one. <laughs> yeah, you do to enjoy each blow. No, you definitely do. Um, I, I can defend the heck out of the Born Supremacy and Born Ultimatum later, but it really, it, I think the movie, the way that shoots action bridges... Um, it sort of brings in the the kinetic energy that I like from the Bourne films. I guess the scariness that the fights have, this like, that you can't keep up with these people. It brings in that, and it also brings in maybe a good sense of geography. Like you said, so that it's like, you you know what happened afterwards, and you're just still terrified that you were in there for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
think you got that. Some okay. criticisms, maybe, that you... Yeah, um, some criticisms. I... <clears throat> okay, so I liked the movie a lot. Um, I, I think in some parts the movie was good, but maybe could have been even better bordering on great if the script had been workshopped a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. And, examples. Yeah. Well, no, and we're arm we're armchair quarterbacking a little bit, mm -hmm. but well, that's that's what a review is. Yeah, so, right. the you know the Hydra conspiracy, this thing that Hydra has, it's infiltrated Shield down to its very core. That's such that's a fascinating idea, and it's just paranoia all around. You don't know who's good, who's bad. Um, I liked that a lot. I didn't like the clunky way that they delivered that exposition, which was uh, which was Zola. In, in computer form, but which was pretty cool, um, but him just telling Captain Black Widow what the conspiracy was. Have some of the plot. I'll feed it to <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah, basically. Um, but, yeah, and so I, you know, I felt like I really don't like that when a villain is like, oh, you're going to be dead soon anyway, let me tell you what, what we're doing. Um, I felt that that weakened it, and there were other ways around that if they had just maybe worked in that scene a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. They I mean could have been more like investigating it by mm -hmm. having to type in some commands. And he's make a, sure. I mean, he's a computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. what can't maybe they can control him a little bit, right. force him right. to tell him. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that bothered me a little bit. Um, I, there was also a few other nitpicks where like when they're trying to decrypt the flash drive. They go to the natural place you would go to to decrypt a flash drive, the Mac store. Right. I, I totally got that. I, that's what I use my devices for. When you have to Apple decrypt device. a military grade flash yeah. drive, people are coming to my house all the time when the app store. The app store <laughs> yeah. The Mac store's closed. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it was just, it, even though that scene itself played well and escaping uh, the mall, I think, was good. Yeah. It, Except for the cliche, we gotta, we gotta do the chaos. We oh, gotta people do. around us all. You know, eh. Yeah, seen that take it or leave it. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it's just a little weird. It's like she's Black Widow. She she knows some hackers. I I know that she knows some hackers, and like that, yeah. I just would have preferred if they maybe go to a hacker who could maybe do that. Shield mm -hmm. agents can still find them. So yeah, I don't know. Right, that right. seemed a little bit. So the script could have had a couple of moments where it just like take right. it. I mean, it, it was at like a nine, just fine. Maybe could have taken it to. I don't know if it's a nine. But yeah, I don't, but <laughs> yeah. That's it was maybe two. it was solid, but it, I felt like it could have been tweaked. Yeah. Um, I yeah. feel like the direction was across the board unanimously amazing, mm -hmm. and um, if this the script wasn't quite quite on that level, but still good. Yeah, you know? yeah, and some of the good things about it were really the character development. And we got mm -hmm. to see a few, uh, really all the characters kind of take taken in a new place. I mean, Cap, Cap, we get to see him. Uh, Doubting, we get to see him doubting his yeah. soldierness. Really, like, well, should yeah. I even maybe step out of this? I don't know. I, yeah, quite sort of questioning his place in the world. Yeah, right. Exactly. He's like, you know, I've been, I'm out of this world. Do I really want to? How hard do I want to try to fit in and still mm -hmm. be a soldier in this new world that is complex and maybe has a lot of gray that is kind of going in a bad direction. Yeah. Um, you know, which was great that to have uh, the Falcon um, there, Sam Wilson. Sam yeah. Wilson to. Uh, be able to be a foil for that, and they had to kind of, what I really like too. A foil, was such maybe kind of ally in that, like, you know, we, we're these kindred spirits, we don't know yeah, yeah, where right. our place is anymore. Right, I like the whole, the, the kind of like the veteran experience coming mm -hmm. out. Uh, I felt respectful, I think. Yeah, you know, I, like the I way I felt, was, I felt, I felt mm -hmm. it was good. Yeah, I did too. And then, even with uh, Natasha, you know, Black Widow, we got mm -hmm. to see that she, when the chips were down and mm -hmm. her structure of her world was pretty much crumbling, yep. she didn't run and hide. She stepped it up and she even went to the self-sacrifice place. Yeah, no, she did. I mean, now the whole world knows who she is mm -hmm. and what she's done. And that's nobody else really came out of the plot as affected as she was, just in terms of like, <laughs> I might be a little screwed now. You know, she's having yeah. to testify before a government, you know, like a Senate committee or yeah. something like that. Right, right. yeah. So, no, that was, that was a very selfless move on her end, and yeah. I, I like that. Yeah, and then Fury, he gets to not, he gets to feel what it's like to not be in control. <laughs> it, his things are crumbling. He's, yeah. You know, at the end, he's, even his allies, he's not, he can't quite muster them to be right at his side. At the oh, end. yeah, like, like Cap, I mean, they, yeah. they disagree, him and Cap, even when they're, you know, they're still both on the same side, but they disagree on how to deal with the Hydra threat. Right. That's, Yeah. And Fury wants to rebuild. We gotta rebuild it, and you know I want. I could get back in the saddle, but yeah, Cap's not everybody is so in love with that. No, so, yeah. So you know it was nice to see these characters pushed, and and even Falcon. Pushed, yeah. I, I really did 
love the, uh, the Falcon's presence. I thought he, he added a lot to it. He did. I, I want to see more of him. I think, you know, I'm yeah. excited. I'm excited it didn't it. feel like, it, it didn't feel like that we were like writing off the success of his comic counterpart. Mm -hmm. You know, it felt like we were, they were showing in his own right. It's like, this is why people love him in the comics. Just yeah. because they're two people who make a great team. Yeah, for sure. So, the climax, the climax. Of the movie. Yeah, I think we both had a few issues with it, right? Yeah. Um, I think leading up to it... It's satisfying. It's great. I mean, it's overall, it's a great Wait, Yeah, overall, we still really liked the movie. Um, but, you know, eh. I, my issue was the, the, oh, we've got these three the, helicopters. Yeah, the three it's, helicopters. Boop, boop, boop. Let me get my video game controller. I gotta hit A and B and then C, and we win. Yeah. Uh, so that whole, like, setup seemed, you know, contrived a little bit with mm -hmm. that. But... On the other hand, while that's all going on, I was able to forgive that because there's so much other stuff going on and there yeah. are these personal interactions. and Like between Cap and the Winter Soldier. Maybe yeah, and, and the boardroom with Redford and... Yeah, uh, I mean... You know, that whole deal. That was really... I, I loved that part. I mean, I really wanted to see that unfold and, mm -hmm. you know, Natasha's part in that was pretty elo elegant and eloquent. Ele elegant and eloquent. <laughs> yeah. Too easy. Yeah. 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 And uh, so, and, and of course, you know, Bucky and Cap, you know, it's, I loved that Cap was, uh, willing to take it there. He was, he was, it came across clear to me that he was willing to die mm -hmm. to try to save his friend, his old time yeah. buddy. You know? Yeah. And he was, he was a smart hero too. Cause he first accomplished his mission. He, you know, he fought the winter soldier to a standstill, did what he needed to do with the helicarrier yeah. and then was like, okay, you know, and the hel winter soldier still coming at him. And he's like, all right, now I'm not going to fight you. Cause yeah. now you know, bigger pictures dealt with, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I, I, I want, you're a friend of mine, I want you to be my friend. Yeah, yeah, and it was, and I also like, there wasn't one of those cheesy moments where you see, oh, this person has memory loss, and all you have to do is just be, you know, say that one catchphrase, or remember when, you know, yeah. and it's like, oh yeah, I do know you. Just, I he's, yeah, I mean, he's like, like having that moment you know, almost while he's pummeling. Like, hmm. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not convinced. I, he basically, he was getting angry, wasn't it? He's like, I'm not that person. <laughs> right. Jesus. So, so that was cool. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, definitely some nice points about the climax. Um, but there was just that kind of like, uh, well, yeah, what if you just controlled one of the helicarriers and made them destroy the others? Yeah. Uh, I did like that it didn't crash into a city and we had another city destruction. Uh, just kind of crashing down on S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters. We just had environmental like, damage. Just to like, you know, you know, twist the knife into S.H.I.E.L.D.'s belly. And yeah. Like, yeah, headquarters. I was just thinking was of it cool. falling into the water. I was, I was yeah. just thinking of some eco-terrorism group. That was just that was not cool with that. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, great stuff from mm -hmm. start to finish. We loved it. Mm -hmm. And finish, then we had post credit post scenes. scenes. Yeah. Um, well, okay, so I I think we both maybe were a little bit more underwhelmed with the post credit yeah. scenes than we have been in the past. Um, and I, I maybe have a controversial viewpoint, so maybe you go take for it. it. Okay. Well, my thing is, I it's, it's a lot to ask of a Marvel movie to give a good movie and then at the same time, uh, two really cool Easter eggs at the end of it. And my thing is like, well, if there are certain movies now going forward that maybe don't require the post credit scenes, maybe just don't put them in there. Um, and I don't know, I would just, I'd be okay with a little bit less of it than I would appreciate the really good ones a little bit more. Um, All right, Cody Soapbox, yeah. over. <laughs> was, yeah. This is, this uh, is how we deal with dissent in yeah, pub. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not like, Someone who loves all the all of these, and this I agree, I was the most un underwhelmed of all the post credit scenes in the various movies. But um, I I don't want to see them go away, and I know you're not really saying that, but just when they're good, yeah, I I can deal with one. I don't have to stick with two or okay. you know, whatever. So you're saying so, maybe you're okay with limiting them, taking away one, yeah. but you still don't want you're not with yeah. me. It doesn't have to be formulaic, and I don't want the directors to feel forced, and then it comes out kind of like it did this time, where it was like, oh yeah, let's, mm, you know. Because, you know, they totally have a formula now, and they've even talked about it. It's like the right. first one connects to something broader, right. or hints at something future, and the, the last one just kind of, like, gives a little glimpse at something related to the movie that just happened. Yep. And, yeah. and that's, you know, Thor kind of set that up, mm -hmm. the, new, the new Thor. And so, um, yeah, I felt like it would have actually been stronger to not see Bucky come out and, like, investigating himself, or like, oh, maybe this is how I'll find out about myself. Yeah. It was because it was I, I like the mystery of, like, where is he going right? to go next? because he saved yeah. Cap, you know, when they were both falling, saved Cap after beating the holy hell out of him. Um, yeah, and so, and but then he just peaced out, and so it was this nice, mysterious end where it's like, all right, maybe Cap got through to him a little bit, 
but not that much because they're still they're not going out for beers afterwards you know <laughs> yeah. it's just still gonna just you know be killing people who knows yeah right so yeah and then of course getting to see uh scarlet witch and quicksilver uh was cool That's just cool. to see them yeah but it was all that was it we just saw them and i was just ba it was begging questions for me like how are you containing Scarlet Witch when she can just like she's like manipulating change matter reality right there a little bit and get out of that? They're um, like that cell, that thing. What's that's to convince her that she doesn't have those powers or something? Yeah, uh, but yeah. So anyway, yeah, it cool. Was, it was just gonna, huh. But overall, I feel like this movie deserves the hype that it got. It does like definitely. It, it is to me. It's still. It's not my favorite Marvel film, but maybe my number two, right mm -hmm. behind Avengers for me. But, yeah, but, um, yeah, Avengers, you know, had a, had a lot going on just, just with all the different heroes and their different motivations, so that probably still takes the cake. Um, Captain America is a very close second, and, you know, maybe I, I'd like to rewatch it, um, but I came out of the movie happy and excited, and I think anyone else who watches it would also. Definitely. That about finishes our thoughts on Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Um, did you agree? Did you disagree? Do you hate my face? Let us know in your comments uh, below. Um, yeah. yeah, and don't forget to check out fanpub.me. That's our website, and you can check us out on all kinds of social media. Thanks for watching. <laughs>